we are going to crack it. Yeah. Well, we all are ready, and let us begin. To predict the product of any reaction, we just need to know three steps, three single steps, and those three steps are here on the screen. Yeah. Well, the first thing that we have to do is understand the type of reaction. For example, if reactants are given to you, observe the reactants and understand the mechanism. Which kind of mechanism can they go through? And second one, identify the cations and anions present in the reactants. Third one, rearrange the ions. See, when I read through these steps, they found little strange, right? They are found little strange. But let us understand it a little in detail with the help of some examples and some explanation. Yeah. So let us start with the first step. The first step I have said that understand the type of reaction. What is type of reaction? First of all, if you remember, we have studied about a few reactions like oxidation, reduction, redox reactions, right? Rusting, corrosion, rancidity. Did we study about them? Can I see your responses, please? Yeah, we have studied about them, right? We know a few of these reactions the same way. There are different types of reactions and mechanisms. Majorly four, combination, decomposition, single displacement and double displacement. Okay, out of these four, as long as we are talking about acids, bases and salts, the type of reactions which are followed by acids, bases and salts are majorly either single displacement or double displacement. But what is the single displacement and double displacement? Don't worry, I'm here to help you if you don't know. Yeah, so single displacement. What is single? Single is one, right? What is displacement? If you are sitting in a bench, a stronger person comes, hits the weaker person in the bench, occupies his place. That's what is displacement, right? Some new body comes and displaces or occupies the position of a weaker body. That's what is called as displacement. If you remember in class eight, we have studied about the metal displacement reactions, right? Metal reactivity series. That's what I'm talking about. And if it is double displacement, of course the same meaning, but in place of one replacement, two replacements will be happening. Don't worry, I'm here to elaborate as well. So single displacement is a reaction in which one cation is displaced by other cation. But remember the cation which is going and fighting with the existing cation is definitely stronger. Yeah, like a stronger person can come hit the weaker person and occupy his place. But if a weaker person goes and hits the stronger person, what happens? The stronger person hits back, right? Same thing applies here also. In single displacement, you will have only one cation. But, sorry, I'm so sorry. In single displacement, you have two cations, but only one anion, yeah? So look at the number of cations and anions and observe. And in double displacement, there are two ions inter-exchanging their places. They are not fighting with each other, but they are just exchanging their places. Like A comes into the place of C, whereas C comes into the place of A. Just a mutual exchange. Yeah. And in double displacement, see how many cations are there. A is one cation, C is another cation. There are two cations and at the same time, there are two anions as well. So single displacement, how do you identify that certain reaction is single displacement? Look at the reactants, how many cations and how many anions are there? If you have two cations and one anion, you call it as single displacement. And if you have two cations and two anions, you call it as double displacement. Guys, the quiz questions will be sh uh, starting shortly. So make a note of these definitions or register them in your brain and then I'll ask you the questions, yeah? So first step, identify the mechanism if it is single displacement or double displacement. If it is single displacement, you can identify by observing two cations and one anion. And if it is a double displacement, you can observe by identifying two cations and two anions present in the reactants, yeah? And by the way, guys, if you are confused what are cations and what are anions, 
Cations are positively charged ions and anions are negatively charged ions, right? So we have cations and we have anions, right guys? So that is the first step. You just got to identify the type of reaction. Acids and bases majorly will undergo a single displacement reaction or a double displacement reaction. If you are talking about single displacement, you have two cations and one anion. Whereas if you are talking about double displacement, two cations and two anions. Well, the second step is, so far we have been saying that identify cation, identify anions. Are they, what is meant by these cations and anions and how do we identify them? It's easier again. You just have to understand that metals always form cations and non-metals always form anions right so out of the reactants that are given firstly identify which are metals i'm sure you know what is meant by metals right and then identify the non-metals if you have a metal it is cation if you have a non-metal that's anion but one exception applicable that is hydrogen the one and only non-metal with positive charge except hydrogen rest everything is the way that i have just said see sodium metal potassium metal etc etc but guys my first question of the quiz is why metals form cations and why non-metals form anions let me see who responds first in the question box why do metals form cations and non-metals form anions? Metals form only cations because metals are electropositive by nature, right? So they have tendency to lose electrons to attain that stable electronic configuration. Whereas non-metals would be gaining electrons to attain stable electronic configuration. Wherever a reactant is given to you, firstly identify the metal and non-metal, thereby identify cation or anion. Let us try some examples. The first example is what if I'm dealing with NaCl? There's a compound NaCl. Out of this, which is metal? Sodium is metal, right? Yeah. So sodium is metal and because it's a metal, it will definitely form what? It will definitely form a cation, right? So sodium is metal and it will be forming cation. Chlorine is non-metal, it will form an anion. So now I know that I have sodium cation and chlorine anion, correct? Hydrogen being non-metal, it is an exceptional case where we have a positive charge. This way, identify the cation and the anion. One more question, NGOH twice. This is N guys, looks like H. Now, NGOH twice, which is the anion in this? Anion is? Ha, huh, I knew this. I knew a few of you would have kept magnesium tight, but that's why I asked you about anion. And anion is what? Hydroxide. That's correct. It is OH minus. Yeah. So this way, the second step in order to predict the product of any reaction is to identify the cations and anions. Basically, cation is something which is formed out of metal and anion is something which is formed out of non-metal exception applied exception of hydrogen applied right and the second step is identifying cation and anion guys one more thing though we have studied about this reactivity series in our class 8 i would love to recall this yeah so during single displacement as we have discussed a stronger cation will come and fight with the weaker cation then occupies its place right so how do you identify which is a stronger cation and weaker cation we have a series right we call it as activity series metal reactivity series the third step is reuniting the cations and anions to form the products so we are going to rejoin the cations and anions to form the products and how do we do that I hope you remember a simple method called as crisscross method, which we have studied in our earlier grades, right? With the help of crisscross method, we consider valencies of the metals and non-metals and we write the product. So now the third step is the crisscross method.